Hello, Bill here, Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. Today we're going to make a bow drill kit from California Buckeye. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to make a bow drill kit from California Buckeye. I have uh, shot a video a little while back, it's on the uh, channel here, where it shows uh, the identification of the California Buckeye and also uh, some of the, uh, the wood that I harvested. This is from, uh, if you watch the video, these are uh, a couple of the pieces of the wood that I harvested off of uh, the uh, buckeye in the video. And uh, this one here we're going to split into a hearth board. And this one here will be our spindle. There's a very slight bow to this uh, spindle, but uh, I think we can make it work. I think it'll be okay. And that's a little bit bigger than, I guess it's about thumb width. And that's a general rule for your uh, your spindle width. About thumb uh, width and thickness. And uh, this California Buckeye is a very interesting wood. It's, it's very lightweight. It's amazingly lightweight. It's almost like balsa wood. And uh, it's extremely porous. It's a very porous wood. This piece here, it's pretty good size, but it's really light. Amazingly light. And with all, uh, with all potential primitive fire making woods, always give it the thumbnail test. Take your thumbnail and see if you can score some divots into that. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick these up or not. Let's see if I can get an angle here on there. Yeah, it's not really doing that good a job, is it? Yeah, you can kind of see that one there. So if it makes a, if, it, if your thumbnail leaves a pretty decent divot in there, fairly easily, uh, it's usually indicative that the wood is uh, soft enough to uh, be used for uh, primitive fire making. So, anyways, uh, we'll begin by preparing the spindle. And one general rule in bushcrafting or survival is always conservation of calories. And if you could find one way you can do that, if you can find a, a branch that's uh, about spindle width, that way uh, it, it lessens your preparation time and, and effort, and uh, consequently you burn much less calories in the uh, construction of your kit. So we're going to start here. So we'll take a look at this. First take a look at the spindle and decide which is going to be our top and our bottom. So we have a knot here in the middle, so that's not that big a deal. We can shave that down. You can see that little bit of bow in here. It's not bad though. So looking at this piece of wood, I think we'll make this side our top at the bearing block. This side here will go into the uh, against the hearth board. So we'll begin by removing the bark. And the reason why we take the bark off, and you can see how soft this wood is. It really carves really carves nice. Remove the bark so it doesn't abrade the bowstring whether you're using paracord or primitive cordage that you reverse wrapped. It's always good to remove the bark. Give yourself a clean surface. You're going to get a lot less abrasion of your your string and of course if it gets abraded enough it will break. So we'll just clean it up here a little bit. Give us a nice clean working area here. Keep you guys in frame here. Knock this knot off. Knot's going to be a little bit harder, of course. Whenever I remove bark and prepare a spindle, I never get it completely smooth. Leave some ridges in there. That gives your bowstring something to bite to. If you get it too smooth, too perfect, you, you risk your you risk your bow uh, 
bowstring slipping on you. I'm going to give you a tip in a while when we get to that point. Get to the part where we're going to uh, make the fire. I'll give you a tip on how to uh, tighten your bowstring with your fingers. This really carves nice. This is so soft. I've never used California Buckeye. I've made a lot of bow drill kits, but I've never used California Buckeye for uh, primitive fire making. So I'm really, uh, really stoked about this. I think it's going to work okay. I'm going to switch over to my folder here. I'd make this the top so be where the, the bearing block goes. The way I do mine, and for the more experienced members of the audience, you may have your your own methods that work best for you. And uh, by all means, use what uh, use what works for you. I'm not trying to change anybody's methods or points of view, but for the new uh, the members of the audience who may be inexperienced this is how I do mine and once you get into primitive fire making you'll probably develop your own techniques as time goes on that uh, best suits your your own particular style and that's perfectly fine so what I do I just make this into a point You get ten different bushcrafters together, and you can have ten different slight variations on how to do all this. The main thing that counts is that uh, that it works and achieves a coal. So really, there's no right or wrong way. As long as the end result is a coal, it uh, it serves its purpose. See if I can smooth this out here a little bit. It's a little bit off. And I just go and round these edges off at the bottom here. This is the part that's going to go against the hearth board. Yeah, this is a really soft wood. I'm really impressed with this. I hope it achieves a coal as easy as I'm, I'm hoping. This will burn in. Got a slight high spot here. I'll take down. Yeah, I think we're pretty good there. That's not looking bad. And again, you can see the the ridges on here. It gives the string something to bite to. So our spindle is done, and it's good good habit when you put your spindle down to. Uh, not just place it on the ground, at least the end that goes against the hearth board. Uh, this ground's pretty dry, but like I said, it's a good habit to get into. And you put it down, just prop up the end, the business end on uh, something. And uh, that will keep, keep your spindle from soaking up, soaking up any moisture off the ground. We're going to go ahead and split this piece here. on this and 
my uh, hearth boards I usually make them about a half inch half inch in width or thickness rather that's just me personally I've seen guys use them up to an inch thick and like I said if uh, whatever technique you have uh, if it works for you uh, definitely uh, definitely use that me personally mine usually come out about a half an inch roughly give or take an eighth of an inch either way and uh, that's just how I come to make them through the years let's see Split pretty easy. Split exactly straight. It's pretty soft wood though. Again, we're going to be about a half an inch, roughly here. So I can have some cleanup. Yeah, it didn't split true. But that's okay. We'll uh, we'll clean it up here. See if we can. Take some of this off here. And uh, I usually use my knives. I like to, I like to chop. I just plane this down, smooth it out. Mainly, you want to get those 90 degree edges on here. Side's pretty smooth. We can get this other side smoothed out here so it sits flat for us. decent now. See how she sits. A little rocking here. We're going to use this as our top. And you can see it's just about, just about a half an inch. I think we're looking pretty decent here. So we'll go ahead and uh, maybe put a start a pilot hole here. And again, I've seen guys, they're really anal about the pilot hole and they shave it out perfectly and I just take the tip of my knife and and just get one started this way. It's always worked well. You can angle your knife down from 90 degrees so you can catch that edge. Catch that edge and flatten it out so it's more of a shallow depression. A 
this just guides the spindle so keeps it uh, cutting in straight so it doesn't wander on us while we burn in the hole. I think we're looking pretty darn good right here. I'm going to talk a few minutes about the bow. This is uh, this bow I've had for a long time, and it's just a uh, just a branch. I think I took it off an oak tree. It's been a while. Honestly, I don't remember where I got it. And uh, the main general rule is uh, your bow should be uh, in length from your armpit down to the end of your fingers, give or take a few inches. It doesn't have to be exact. And uh, I'm using standard uh, 550 paracord on here. Nothing special. And by removing the bark on spindles, and I made a lot of fires with this, uh, the, the paracord's still in fair condition. But uh, get a, find yourself a, a small branch. Should be about fingers width. If you get one that's really thick, it's gonna be a lot of weight. And when you, when you use this to uh, actuate the spindle you're, you're holding it with one hand and if it's really big and if it's really thick it's, it's going to be heavy and harder to use uh, with one hand and wear you down a lot faster so uh, what I always do I look for something about eh, a little bigger than fingers width and uh, with a natural bow to it now this section comes in a little bit more and I like this because I use this as a handle on this end and when I have my when I have my spindle in the string, my spindle's in the string here, to tighten the string, if I feel it's gonna slip or when it really starts smoking towards the end, uh, and I'm gonna give it that extra that extra go to uh, to get that uh, that char to ignite, I'm holding this in with my hand and I'm sawing and I take my thumb and I push in on the string. And that puts extra tension on your uh, on your bowstring and your spindle when you're really going for it, and it keeps your uh, it really helps to keep your spindle from uh, your string from slipping on the spindle. I've never once ever had uh, the string uh, slip on a spindle using that method. So a little tip there I wanted to pass on to you guys. Okay, so we're going to go ahead here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause you guys. And get this set up so we can uh, we can burn that hole in. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hello, welcome back. Finally got positioned here. The ground's a little uneven. I had to knock down a high spot here so the board would sit flat. When you place your spindle in your bowstring, just start it off on the inside of the string. Hope you guys can see that. Take the top inside, wrap it around. And that way your spindle is on the outside of the string and not on the inside. That way it gives you more clearance between your string and your bow here. And I'll show you guys that once more in a little bit when we get ready to make the coal. So what we're doing now, we're going to burn the hole in. And I use a round that was cut and has bearing uh, sunk in countersunk into the round here works really well extremely well pocket size fits right inside my little uh, primitive fire and uh, trapping kit here that I have and uh, you can use a regular piece of wood carve a, a hole into the top and then lubricate that with uh, it could be green grass you can use pine sap uh, you can run the top edge of your top edge of your spindle here along the along the uh, uh, sides of your nose. Use your skin's natural oils to lubricate this. Anything that you can use, uh, green pine needles, you can put a wad of those in there inside your, your, your hole in your, in, your, uh, in your bearing block. Anything to reduce the friction on the top, you want the friction down at the bottom on the hearth board where it counts. Reduce it up here, increase it at the bottom. 
Okay, so, and this spring fits really tight right here, so very little uh, pressure I'm going to have to put on this. So we'll go ahead and burn this in. I can already smell smoke. That really started smoking quick. I think this is going to make a great bow drill wood. Okay, what we're going to do now... Let's cut a notch on this in my little trapping kit my little trapping primitive fire kit it's a military drop leg pouch goes around your waist has straps that go around your thigh and I've got per homemade perimeter alarms in here I have a military rain poncho I have a military casualty blanket OD green on one side uh, it's nylon reinforced and with mylar on the other side uh, snare wire, paracord, I have a whole bow drill kit on the inside here, my little mini kit, snare wire, green coated so it doesn't rust. I get this at Michael's, I think it's 150 feet for 150 feet 24 gauge for like a dollar fifty, you can't beat that, get a lot of primitive snares out of that. I'll do another video at another time on uh, on all of those. But these little saws here, I carry this in my kit too. This little folding saw. These guys, they're the old school wooden handled stuff. And in my opinion, they're they're built so much better than the new the new saws. Uh, I get these for like a dollar at the flea market. People throw stuff out, they're used. I oiled up the handle on this so it, it looks really nice. I don't know how old this thing is. It's got a leather leather uh, wrist strap on the end here. I don't know, 30 years old maybe. 40 years old, still cuts like brand new. I got a whole bunch of these. I pick them up out at uh, different sizes. I have big ones and uh, this little one I love. It fits right in my kit. So I use this for small jobs but dollar a piece nobody wants the old school stuff with the wooden handles they want they want plastic nowadays I was raised with the old school stuff and I absolutely love this so I pick them up at the at the auctions even a lock blade so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut a notch get you guys in frame here we're gonna V this in the V we're gonna come in about a third of the way not quite to halfway, just about a third of the way into this hole and cut a pie shaped notch. And I'll just give you a close up of that here in just a sec. But this little fine tooth saw works perfect for making these, these notches. I absolutely love it. It really works well. side here. Okay, show you what I got going here. Here's the pie-shaped notch. 
And what I do is I use my knife and I clean this up. You want to get any fuzz out of here that anything's going to keep if you have have some fuzz what's going to happen is it's going to keep your coal from compacting properly in here so I just clean it up and you can also widen the base of this out in both directions here and this draws a little more oxygen into into your coal. Wow, this buckeye is really soft. This is a really easy wood to carve. So see, we're flaring this open at the bottom. Opening that up, the char is going to come down and it's going to collect here. And I think we're ready to uh, give this a shot. Let me get uh, positioned and I will be back. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. Had to get a quick water break too. It's crazy hot out here. We've been under a lot of triple digit heat out here on the west coast, so this past winter. It uh, was so wet, a lot of flooding out here after a, after a long stretch of drought, and uh, now it's gone the other way, and now we're under a lot of heat. So, anyways, what I'm doing here is uh, I cut some jute cordage and uh, separating this uh, fiber here. This is gonna be our tender bundle. So I just cut it into pieces and just pull the pieces apart here. Separate it, put it in the pile. Cut piece, they're probably about five inches long. Cut the pieces and separate them. By fluffing this up this way, it's gonna make the uh, Material take the uh, the coal a lot better and ignite. The smaller pieces always, always, always ignite much easier than uh, large, thicker pieces. And as soon as we get all this tender bundle prepared. this guy ready to go. It's a piece of white birch bark and I've reused that one a number of times. You see the scorching on there for uh, other bow drill and hand drill fires. Call that the welcome mat. That's right underneath the notch and that catches the coal. It's better to use something natural. You want it dry of course. Uh, and something natural uh, if you use metal, I've seen people use knife blades and stuff, in my opinion that tends to zap some of the, the heat out of the char. And the idea you want that temperature to rise to the point that it's going to ignite and uh, achieve combustion temperatures. This wood here is very soft, this uh, California Buckeye, uh, just like uh, yucca wood. So I suspect yucca has a flash point of uh, 150 degrees if memory serves. And I suspect that uh, this wood here being very uh, very soft and porous is going to have a pretty low uh, pretty low flash point. At least hopefully it goes that way. Nothing's written in stone in bushcrafting. Why it's so very important to practice these techniques until they're second nature. Don't just read books or watch videos. That's not going to teach you anything. You you have to get out, and if you want to learn this stuff, you got to do it hands-on. And it's not easy. 
primitive fire making is probably the most difficult aspect out of a lot of the techniques. It took me a while to master it. First wood I ever achieved a coal with was uh, incense cedar, Calicedrus decurrens. And I watched the coal form before my eyes. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And uh, it was like a primal scream went off inside of me, something very ancient. And it became a, an addiction after that. And I started uh, making kits out of all types of different woods. And I got a lot of other kits I'm going to do in other videos. As soon as time permits. Okay, we have a pretty good tender bundle here. It's a pretty good size. Coal will go right in here. You wrap around and then blow. And uh, we'll get to that point in a while. Hopefully, if we get a coal, we should. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. So let's uh, let's begin. Tender bundle right here, ready to go. I'm going to spin the screen around here so I can ensure you guys are in frame. Again, take your spindle, the top, bring it in to the inside and just around to the outside. Start on the outside of the string, rotate the top in, and then over the top again, and you wind up with your spindle on the outside of your string. It's very, very easy. Just takes a little practice. All right. The way I do, I want to get, I put my head just about over the top of the spindle and I lock my wrist up against my shin to brace it. Keep your spindle at a 90 degrees, nice smooth even strokes in the beginning, let the kit warm up. Start cranking on it till that notch is full. Just take your time. Nice long, even strokes. Got a little bit of smoke. An eye on the notch. Start and fill up. Once the notch is full, then you can pick up speed. So far, keep your fingers crossed. I'm gonna crank on it now. Of coal, guys, and I have to say, I am extremely, extremely impressed with California Buckeye. I mean, that is, I have used a number of woods, but this is by far one of the easiest. I mean, it's right, it's right up there on par with Yucca. Take your 
char and lightly clump it together. Very impressed with Buckeye. Extremely good bow drill wood. I suspect it'd make a good hand drill too. We get a long enough, straight enough piece. See if I can find, I'll have to go out to uh, do a little more foraging. I found a nice grove of these where I filmed the uh, the Buckeye identification video, which I mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, there's a whole bunch of Buckeye out there. So I'm going to go back and see if I can find a, a piece and uh, see if I can make a hand drill video. So we have a nice coal here. And there's no hurry. You don't want to rush it, you want to let that coal build. Dump it in, see how it clumps together. And we will have a fire here in just a sec. See that coal start to glow already? Beautiful, absolutely love Buckeye. Amazing wood. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Artwork. Absolutely beautiful. And that, my friends, is California Buckeye. Hope you appreciate. Uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the video, and had as much fun viewing it as I uh, did making it. It's a lot of fun today. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share to my channel. I've got a lot of videos upcoming. I've got more uh, botanical, uh, uh, wild botanical and medicinal uh, plant identification coming up, uh, tinctures, salves, deca decoctions, uh, herbalism videos, more bushcrafting, uh, a lot of things, a lot of things planned out. So as time permits, I'll, uh, I'll put them up on here. Everybody have a good day and I will see you soon on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.